I'm Staff Sergeant Brandon Green from the United States Army Marksmanship Unit Service Rifle Section. And today we're going to go through a basic rifle marksmanship class. First class that we're going to go through is Fundamentals of Marksmanship. Alright, so what is shooting? If you ask all of your students what is shooting, you're going to get several different answers in that. What we're going to try to do now is show you um, that all shooting is the same. So again, if you ask all your students, is all shooting the same? More often than not, you're going to get different answers to that. So we're going to break it down. Here we have three statements. Shooting rifle prone in combat, shooting rifle, uh, shooting pistol kneeling in competition, and shooting a shotgun standing in training. All right, these three simple statements, we're going to break them down. All right, so we have combat, competition, and training. What are they? They're nothing more than where we're doing the shooting at, the venue that we're shooting in. All right, so they're not the act of shooting, so let's remove those from the equation. All right, now we have prone, kneeling, and standing. Are they the act of shooting? No, they're not. They're very simply the positions that we're shooting from, so we'll get rid of those. Now you have shooting a rifle, shooting a pistol, and shooting a shotgun. Break it down once again. Rifle, pistol, and shotgun are nothing more than the weapon systems that we're doing the shooting with, so they're not the act of shooting. So now we have Shooting, shooting, and shooting. Which shooting is different? As you can see, once you remove the place that you're doing the shooting at, the position you're doing the shooting from, and the weapon that you're actually shooting, the act of shooting is all the same. So now let's go through and figure out how we shoot properly. All right, the proper application of marksmanship fundamentals is how we properly zero the weapon and hit what we're aiming at, regardless of the weapon system we're using. Uh, we break shooting down into two firing tasks. The first task being properly point the rifle at the target. The second task being fire the rifle without moving it. All right, to do this, we're going to break down each one of these firing tasks. All right, a fact, the bullet will always go in the direction the barrel is pointed. How do we know where the barrel is pointed? Can we look through the barrel while we're actually firing it? No, we can't. Someone a long time ago decided to put external references on top of the weapon system they were shooting. We call these sights. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about is sight alignment. Sight alignment is nothing more than centering the tip of the front sight post vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture with your head firmly planted on the stock. All right, here we have a picture, which is sight picture. Sight picture is nothing more than introducing a target into properly aligned sights. All right, once you center the front sight post vertically and horizontally inside the rear sight aperture, you simply aim center mass on the target, and that gives you your sight picture. All right, when aiming through a set of iron sights or optic, it's very, very important that you keep your focus in the correct spot. A human eye is just like a camera lens. It can only focus on one thing at a time. The most important thing for you to focus on when you're shooting through iron sights is the tip of the front sight post, making sure it is centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture. If you're shooting through an optic, again, it's important that you focus on the reticle inside the optic. Therefore, you always know exactly where that reticle is and what it's aiming at. All right, here you can see through the iron sights that the shooter is clearly focusing on the target. The front sight post is completely blurry. You can't tell whether it's centered inside the rear sight aperture or center mass on the target. It's a guess. So it's very important that you keep focus on the front sight post. Again, the optic is out of uh, focus here on the right. You can't tell exactly where those crosshairs are on the target itself. So it's very, very important that you keep focused on the tip of the front sight post when shooting irons and on the reticle itself when you're shooting an optic. Okay, so we have a rifle here on the screen. Are the sights on top of this rifle aligned? Well, yes, they are. They're in a fixed mechanical relationship to the barrel. So therefore, they are aligned on the top of the rifle. All right. In order for us to make sure our sight alignment is correct, you must keep your dominant eye in the same position behind the rear sight, achieving consistent sight alignment. And this is exactly why stock weld is so very important. Keeping your face on the stock in the exact same spot from shot to shot allows you to keep your sight alignment correct each shot. All right, proper stock weld ensures consistent sight alignment and will improve your accuracy. All right, consistent sight alignment is achieved by resting the full weight of the head in the same position on the stock from shot to shot. All right, this will keep your dominant eye behind the rear sight in between each shot. 
here on the left, the picture looks like the shooter is very simply placing their face against the stock. They're not putting good solid pressure on the stock. This is going to allow that weapon to recoil independently of their head and their eye is going to move behind the rear sight. The picture on the right, you can tell the shooter has kind of a chipmunk cheek. He is getting the full weight of his head on the rifle. This is going to anchor his face to the stock and the rifle and his head are going to move in unison as the rifle recoils. This is going to help his eye remain in the exact same spot behind that sight. All right, this is stock weld from the front angle. All right, the correct way to look through the rear sights is to keep your head vertical and to keep the full weight of your head rested on that stock the entire time you're shooting. As you can see the picture on the left, the shooter's head is upright directly behind the sights. The picture on the right, again, the shooter is very simply placing their head against the stock, not putting any weight onto the stock, and that rifle is going to recoil independently of their face every shot. All right, here you have we introduced some lines to show you the angle of the head and the way it should be. The shooter on the left, again, full weight of the head pressing straight down on the stock. It's going to anchor their stock well down exactly the way it should be. Okay, so stock well brings us into aiming. All right, a misalignment of the sights in your sighting system creates an angular error. All right, this angle will increase as the distance gets farther. As you can see, the picture on the left here. Even though the front sight post is centered on the target, it is not centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture. All right, this creates that angular error that's going to get bigger and bigger as the distance goes down range. It's very, very important that you keep the tip of the front sight post in focus and centered vertically and horizontally in that rear sight aperture to keep from inducing an angular error. A three or four thousandths misalignments in the rear sight is going to equal several inches downrange at 300 meters. All right, here we have eight different sight pictures. We have the rear sight aperture, the front sight post, and the target. We're going to go through each sight picture and see if they're going to be a hit or miss if we fired that rifle. Keep in mind that a hit anywhere on the target is a hit for this little demonstration. All right, so in the top right corner, we have the very first sight picture. As you can see, the tip of the front sight post is on the target. It's barely on the lower right edge, but it's on the target, and it's centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture. So if we fire that rifle, you can see that the bullet comes up exactly where the front sight post is. That shows you that proper sight alignment will give you a hit, even if you're aiming at the edge of the target. All right, the second sight picture, again, if you pay attention to the front sight post, it looks very well centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture. So when we fire that rifle, Boom, the bullet shows up exactly where we should. All right, shot number three, we fire the rifle. Boom, again, another hit. All right, as you can tell, front sight post is still centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture. Target number four, we fire the shot. Boom, all right, our shot comes up low. If you pay attention to the center of the rear sight aperture, vertically and horizontally, you can tell that the front sight post is much lower than, it's, than center mass. It, this might only be a few thousandths of an inch on the actual sights themselves, but it equals several inches downrange at 300 meters. This is why sight alignment is so important. All right, shot number five. Boom, fire the shot. Again, it comes up low. Look at the front sight post, and in relation to the rear sight aperture, you can tell that it's not centered. All right, shot number six, fire the shot. The sights are aligned correctly. The hit comes up exactly where the front sight post is on target. Shot number seven, we fire the shot. All right, as you can tell, the shot come up high. Again, if you look at the center of the rear sight aperture, you can tell that the front sight post is higher than center mass in the rear sight aperture. Target number eight, fire the shot. Boom, it comes up exactly where the front sight post is. The sights are properly aligned. So here we introduce crosshairs inside the rear sight aperture to show you true center of that rear sight. All right, on the ones where we have a good solid hit, where it's exactly where the front sight post was, you can tell that the sight alignment was correct on those shots. On the shots where we have a miss, you can clearly see that the front sight post is not centered in the rear sight aperture and your miss will always be in the direction of the misalignment of the sights.
All right, if you misalign the sights and have your front sight lower than center mass on the, in the rear sight aperture, your shot's going to be low. If it's like the top left one and your front sight post is high in the rear sight aperture, your shot's going to be high. This is that misalignment of the sights that creates that angular error. All right, we remove the target just so you can clearly see exactly where the front sight post is in the rear sight aperture. On the ones where we had hits, again, perfect sight alignment. The ones where we have misses, that shot was always in the direction of the misalignment of the sights. All right, so that explains what sight alignment is and what it should look like. The tip of the front sight post centered vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture is your sight alignment. Once you throw that target in the background and the properly aligned sights, it's very easy to hit that target every time. But ensuring that that sight alignment is perfect from shot to shot is the most important part of it. This brings us into trigger control. All right, so now we're going to go through all the words that we've all heard throughout our military careers to describe trigger control. You have, you know, you've seen people jerk the trigger. You've seen people pull the trigger. You've seen people snatch the heck out of the trigger. All right, you've heard people tell you to make it a surprise break when the shot goes off. All right, you've heard people tell you to squeeze the trigger. Some people command detonate the trigger. Some people yank the trigger. All right, the most important part of it and what we try to teach to all of our students, it doesn't matter if you squeeze a trigger slowly or if you try to have it go off a little bit quicker, the most important thing that you can do is be smooth on the trigger. All right, the goal of trigger control is to fire that rifle without moving it. Remember, you've already taken all that time to align the sights correctly. It's very important that you fire the shot without misaligning those sights or moving that rifle off the target. All right, so fast or slow or however you need to shoot the shot, you have to ensure that you're doing it smoothly. So let's go through trigger finger placement. Okay, um, coming in through basic training, we worked with a lot of drill sergeants and they were taught to teach students to put the tip of their front, the tip of their trigger finger on the trigger. All right, what you do by doing this, by making an artificial trigger finger placement is take away the shooter's leverage on the trigger, all right? This artificial trigger finger placement removes all the leverage that you have by really grabbing the pistol grip and letting your trigger finger fall naturally on the trigger, making it harder for you to break the shot. All right, what we teach is to grip high on the pistol grip and let your trigger finger fall naturally on the trigger. This is called natural trigger finger placement. It's very important that you do this. This will allow you to have a maximum amount of leverage that your hand can and fire that rifle without moving it. So here you can see that the shooter has a good high firm handshake grip, good tight grip on the pistol grip, and their trigger finger is naturally on the trigger wherever it should be for that person's hand. All right. Again, proper placement of the trigger, of the uh, firing hand on the pistol grip and the trigger finger on the trigger is going to allow you to squeeze that trigger straight to the rear without moving the rifle. Boom. You can see the shooter squeezes the trigger straight to the rear. The rifle doesn't jerk to one side or the other. All right, it's very important that you have that natural trigger finger placement on the trigger. All right, so now that we know how to properly align the sights and fire the rifle without moving it, our next step in the process is to follow through. Most shooters have never heard of follow through. They don't know what it is. All right, so let's explain it. Follow through is nothing more than continuing to apply the two basic fundamentals of marksmanship through the entire shot process until recoil has ceased. All right, this is nothing more than keeping your eye focused on the front sight post, your head on the rifle, and the trigger finger to the rear throughout the entire shot process until recoil has ceased. All right, we check and enforce follow through by having the shooter call their shots. All right, calling your shot is nothing more than telling your coach or your battle buddy exactly where that front sight post was on the target when the shot went off. If you're not watching the sights correctly, and if you're not being smooth on that trigger, you can't tell your coach exactly where that shot was when the, when the rifle was fired. All right, so calling your shot causes the shooter to emphasize concentration on the front sight post. That shooter needs to be focused on the front sight post, ensuring that it is centered both vertically and horizontally in the rear sight aperture and centered on the target. All right, so as long as that shooter is focusing on that front sight post, they should be able to tell you exactly where that shot's going to come up on target.